524th edition of the MMA Gambling Podcast. All the Sports Gambling Podcast Network is brought to you by Cut. Cut is a peer-to-peer social betting platform that's U.S.-based and available in 40 states. Head on over to Cut.com. That's K-U-T-T dot com. And use promo code SGPN for a 10% deposit bonus. We're also brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Play their fantasy pick for a chance to win 100 times your entry in NBA, NHL, college basketball, and more. Sign up today using promo code SGPN to get a 100% deposit match. Next, we're brought to you by SGPN subscriber-only March Madness Bankroll Challenge. Free to enter in up to $2,000 in prizes. Enter today at sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash madness. And finally, we're brought to you by Hall of Fame Bets, the sports betting research platform for parlays, player props, and game lines. Download the Hall of Fame Bets app or visit hofbets.com and use promo code SGPN to get 50% off your first month. Start making smarter bets today. Heidi Ho, DeGenerinos, welcome to episode 524, 524 of the MMA Gambling Podcast and Sports Gambling Podcast Network. This one's going out to all our Irish listeners. Everyone, I guess, is Irish today. So this goes out to everyone because a lot of people pretend that they're Irish on St. Patrick's <laughs> Day. So this goes out to, uh, I am technically way back, way back in the history of my family, but uh, mostly Scottish. But anyhow, happy St. Patrick's Day. What, thank you for coming to the show. That's probably the only time happy will be said on this episode because it was not happy. <laughs> it was not a happy night. Oh, okay. Here, here's another thing. I was happy. I'm happy that I beat Gumby. But we had one different pick, and Gumby took a swing on a big. Did you? Did you make up a lot through. of ground? Did you make up a lot of ground? I made it? up huge ground. Yeah, winning, winning one fight over you. We made up huge ground. Um. So yeah, this was a. Uh, I'm Jeff Chalks Fox, by the way. Hi. How are you? Um. This was a card. People enter Discord, which you should get in because uh, sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash Discord. Because there's if you're a sicko like uh, the sickos in the Discord, you will already be talking about Peyton Talbot versus Cameron Simon. You'll be talking about that at least a week in advance, like the sickos in there are right now. People are actually debating who's going to win that fight. Um, people are claiming it's uh, Peyton Talbot fight week, Carl Williams fight week. So yeah, <laughs> there, there's some weird people in there. But anyhow, there's also people in there who are like saying, <laughs> who are, well, we've we've heard this before but people who are like gonna quit watching the ufc after this event uh well we've had people quit say they're gonna quit gambling but not a lot of times they say they're just gonna quit watching the sport but yeah it was it was one of those events but there was a lot of finishes that's the thing about it, it wasn't like it was a boring decision fast it was still a boring fight <laughs> <laughs> we had seven submissions it, it was just a weird event we had bad roughing we had bad uh judging we had bad fighting was the, the refing worse than the judging? I, I'm just gonna throw that out there. I think the refing so. was worse than the judging. That's Gumby talking, everyone. Say everybody say hi, Daniel Gumby Reeland. He's not hey, getting up, intru- not getting a big yeah. introduction today, so that's him. The man from the hills, you can also call him. Um yeah, I don't know that there was one glaring judge decision <laughs> that, that was incorrect and one glaring ref decision that was incorrect. Everything else was a little less glaring, but I kind of expect it from the judges, I guess, especially the names that we were hearing on the cards when, when we had split decisions. Adelaide enough. Bird, Sally Bird. Yeah. Um, <laughs> little Ron McCarthy. It's all like, uh, I cringe yeah. when I hear his name too. Now like, Oh no. Yeah. He's right up there with Sal Diamato. He deserves uh, all the same credit as Sal Diamato does as being one of the greats. Yeah. Another one, your favorite, John Chiro, What's his name again? Junichu um, Kimiro. Junichu yeah. Kimiro. Sorry. I butchered yeah. the Japanese name. Yeah. He's one of your favorites too. Yeah. It was a rogues gallery, a, uh, a rogues gallery of, of judges last night. I think we got the right winners for every fight, except for the one. one. And the one yeah, was one. the wrong side for us. <laughs> Our <laughs> we lock. Our lock of the week was the one lock they botched. The Isaac Dalgarian. He, he really didn't deserve to win after the, like he, he can complain and stuff. But he like, deserved he, to win. He ran out of gas. You can't blame a guy for running out of gas like that. That's what I decided that this episode is going to be called. It's going to be called grappling makes me sleepy. Cause that happened to a bunch of people last night. It wasn't just him. Grappling really tires you out uh, as, as Daniel uh, Gumby Vreeland knows. Um, yeah. So he, he should have won the fight, but he kind of gave it, gave it away as well. Um, yeah, and that ruined the night for us. After that fight, we did not win. And uh, we got a no contest on a fight we were going to win. And then we lost on two fights that uh, that we had picked. So that pretty much that derailed the night for us and for a lot of our friends in the Discord as well. 
Yeah, I will say this. Um, my my favorite part of your introduction there, by the way, was when you were like, "It was a fight card." <laughs> <laughs> Did I say that? And, See, that wasn't then, even intentional. And then I, you pause. Then you pause for a second and said, "Like a complete non sequitur." Like you were like, <laughs> "It was a fight card." Uh, it was. It's true. And it, you're you're right about that. It was definitely. There's the a fight title. Card. That's better than my title. It was, it was a, fight a fight card. card. Um, and, and yeah, like I I think. You know, if, if you're looking at just like the raw data of how we did, like, yeah, it didn't it didn't look great. But then, like, you no. were like, "Well, you should have won the Dalgarian fight. You should have won the you know Brian Battle fight. You were close to winning mm, right. some other fights." Like, yeah, like it's uh, on paper it looks not so bad, but like I think our capping uh, for the most part on this fight card was pretty damn good. Well, half of the like the first four fights we hit two dogs in in, in two yeah. uh, in two of those fights. So like things started off pretty including one who missed weight. Including one who missed weight. And a plus 61. So yeah, it was um yeah. This isn't we're just well maybe we will. I was gonna say we're not just gonna complain the whole episode, but maybe we will. Yeah, let's uh, complain. Let's most... start at the top though. Let's complain. <laughs> that's what most podcasts are, are they not? People <laughs> bitching bitching about one thing or another. So we of course are talking about UC fight night, Tuivasa versus Tybura. Um I raced home from the big city to watch this fight card. Um, oh boy, was I was like, <laughs> um, it was last night, UFC Apex, or at least yesterday afternoon. Um, it, we have, first of all, before we even started, we had three fighters miss weight. Two of them won, which is rare. Usually it w- would be the other way around. Um, Nathan Levy came in heavy. He got smushed regardless. <laughs> Chelsea Chandler came in heavy. She got sh- smushed until she got to grapple a bit. Um, and then Danny Silva, he didn't get smushed. He, no, he looked good. That, he that looked good. Yeah. So um, those three miss weight. So it, it was a big night for that. All right. On to the fight card. We start from the top, go to the bottom. So you'll know by now this this part of the fight card, we got ruined by bad judging. It jinxed it all. Marchin Tybura and his fancy haircut, a reverse chalks haircut, <laughs> I call it. He's skin on the side and hair down the middle. Um, I, I should, if, if I put my head with his and I have a perfect, uh, perfect head of hair. But anyhow. New haircut, uh, didn't absorb elbows too well because he, he got cut up pretty early in this fight against Tai Tuivasa. And then he remembered, hey, wait a minute, Tai Tuivasa can't wrestle. I'm going to take this man down and I'm going to put him in a choke. And four, four, well, actually, 408 was when it ended. So probably about three and a half minutes in, I'm going to put him in a choke. And Tai Tuivasa, or maybe even more, three minutes in, Tai Tuivasa is going to do nothing to fight it. He's just going to make a face and grimace for about a minute. No, no, he didn't fight it at all. And then he taps out. How I, was I, that good? Good strategy, Gumby. He did nothing with his hands. He just grimaced. I, I actually think he did a little bit with his hips, trying to turn the angles okay. and stuff like that. I, you're right. I don't think it was enough. Uh, ultimately, like that's kind of what we said in the the lead up to the fight, right? Is like I thought he could avoid the grappling enough, but if he couldn't, it was going to be over the opposite way that we planned. Um, Almost dead. He almost yeah, that elbow yeah, to start things yeah, off. Yeah, he looked great. He looked great, and and I think. No, no matter what side you came down on here, and we were on the Toy Vasa side, we missed this one. Um, but no matter what side you were on, it was either Toy Vasa lands all those bombs early on, or he gets taken down and looks like an absolute, you know, idiot. Uh, and it was the latter. Both happened. Both yeah, happened. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I guess both happened. <laughs> Technically, that's yeah. True. Yeah, I guess that's true. Both happened. Um, I don't know that there's much to say other than no, that, though. Not. Like, it, that's it was the problem like, with this fight card, Jan. That's the problem with this fight card. <laughs> there's nothing know, to say going into it. I don't know. That and we had a much... feeling. We actually said this in pre-production a few days ago. There's not going to be much to say in this episode, is there? <laughs> Regardless of what. Yeah, it, it, it's a. It was a terrible fight card with not a lot of stakes, and all the fights you were like, well, either this happens or this happens, but either way, we learn nothing, uh, and yeah, we learn nothing. Happens. Uh, yeah. Marching Tibera still kind of can't strike with Tai Tuivasa. Tai Tuivasa no. still kind of can't grapple with Marching Tibera, and neither of them are top five or top, and maybe even top ten heavyweights. So there you go. There, there's where it, we're at. Is Tai? They, they kind of cut him once before a few years ago, and then he's gone on a run since then. Is he gonna stick around? This is three straight losses for him. Four straight losses. Four. That's excuse me. You're right, and they're all finishes too. Yeah, and and this is the lowest level of them. Is is Marcin Tibera? <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't know. No, it's like, true, but, but yeah. can, can you cut him when we're about to watch Mohammed Usman fight next <laughs> weekend? Like, I, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I guess cost wise, you can, right? Like, if, if yeah. you're worried about how much he costs, I'm sure he makes decent money. 
Yeah, like, uh, but like, heavyweight's been around a long time, fan favorite. So he probably makes some not not enough money, obviously, but he, in but retrospect. He also, but he's also the type of guy who can headline these fight night cards. Too, yeah, that's right? like yep. like if you if you wheel them out against a uh Mohamed Usman for a freaking fight night card in six weeks from now if Mohamed Usman happens to beat Mick Park in this this next fight nobody bad an eyelash they'd just be like oh yeah that's a that's an apex card I get that um yeah, well, he, he lost three straight and came in here as as the favorite so yeah so, so so I don't I don't want to cut him I'm just saying will he <laughs> will he survive? yeah yeah I, I I would say if they cut him it's it's money based only um yeah. because because he's still one of the best 25 to 30 heavyweights in the UFC right now. Uh, yeah. he, he's not worth being cut, but he's, he's worth being cut in the terms of how much he makes probably. So yeah. uh, if they do choose to cut him, it's a monetary choice and nothing else. Yeah. And uh, Ro- Jarzinho Rosenstrick is called out Marchant Tiber. You're excited about that. I bet you are. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. One thing you should be excited about is what should i tell you about first cut and then i'll tell you about a couple of exciting contests we have going on cut is a peer-to-peer social betting platform that's u.s based and available in 40 states i guess technically that's you gumby you're available in 40 states at least 40 states right you could be available that's, that's me I, right I'm, price. I'm a 40 statement <laughs> for, for 40 statement that's another man so many good titles this episode and then other episodes there's nothing for me to use as a title but anyhow um gumby for the right price he's available in more than 40 states 50 how many of you guys got 52 just that's 50, right 50, 50, 50, 50, 50 and then 50, 50, 50, two territory 50, 50. two territories right yeah hawaii DC, and, DC oh. and, no no hawaii's a state man <laughs> okay D, dc and puerto rico how many provinces are there dan go ahead you you uh, want to mock me about the u.s <laughs> you got eight eight uh, i think i think there's more Anyhow, you don't even know. know you don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, cut. I'm derailing your ad. Uh, peer-to-peer social betting is a new and better way to bet. Bet directly against your friends or other users in sports, politics, pop culture, and other events with verifiable outcomes and tons of fun features, including social features. They give it a feel of a social betting network. I'm all over the map here. Cut offers lower big and fully customizable odds. Uh, create your own bets. And I'm saying customizable. Uh, cut handles the payment side of things so you never have to chase down anyone for money and the social features are group chats betting leaderboards head head history user profiles fan groups and more and the rewards are you get your cash back every single time you bet against your friends or other users and there's lots of f- fun bets on there that our our sgpn family are putting up i can't tell you i'm in canada they don't let me play but gumby says he's going to put one up for us we're going to find some fun one to put up for our show right gumby u.s that's based right. gumby that's right that's, that's right. right i got i got i got you coming up soon he, he's not in the Man- discord if you want to find more it's true he's not in british columbia manitoba saskatchewan uh alberta ontario ontario nova scotia quebec new brunswick pei nine and then and then we got uh those territories like nunavut and yukon and northwest territories there you go um anyhow download cut today I hope Cut listens to this. They'll be like, what the hell was that? <laughs> Download Cut today in the App Store or over on Cut.com. That's K-U-T-T dot com. And use promo code SGPN for 10% deposit. A bonus. Chox is, will be out of work. It will be the Gumby Show. Uh, merch Madness is going on, ladies and gentlemen. 15% off everything in the merch store. Promo code MADNESS. Uh, you can get like the hat, I'm wearing, or the hat and the shirt I'm wearing. I forgot. I got a, I got a Gumby shirt on, too, as you our friends on YouTube will see. I got the, the Gumby Tuesday Night Miracles shirt. Almost that time of year, Gumby. Half a year to go, right? We're getting, we're getting <laughs> Five close. months to go. Um, yeah, so grab all that stuff. And obviously, the other shows have great gear as well. So that's Merch Madness. The c- promo code is Madness. SportsGamingPodcast.com slash store. And if that's not enough for you, we also have a Madness contest for the SGPN subscribers only. The contest is free to enter and only open to subscribers of the SGPN's shows. So hopefully, you are a subscriber. Dan likes to yell at you. If you're watching on YouTube, you better be a subscriber by this point after being scolded. For every SGPN show you're subscribed to, you'll get bonus credits to use in the contest. That is cool. It's a bankroll style contest and winner takes all for a $1,000 prize or $2,000 if you're subscribed to Sports Gambling Podcast Patreon. So you double your money there. You make money by going on the Patreon. Go to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash madness. That's sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash madness. I never read the ads in, in advance, so all that's a surprise to me too. Sounds good. Subscribe to the show, as people. Um, all right, main event, not good. I haven't said that H word. Co-main event, also bad. Co-main event, going our way, Brian Battle. 
was pretty much piecing up Anj Losa. Um, could handle him on the ground and on the feet, like we said. And then there was an eye poke a minute into the second round. Losa decided he was not going to continue or couldn't continue. He got called a pussy. Off, they almost <laughs> fought. The, the fight almost restarted uh, after a battle was slipping off to him. And then it was a no contest. So we were, what, a minute... Now, if, if it had gone past the halfway mark, would it have gone to the scorecards? Because I don't always ever confused. know. The yeah, you don't know either. Okay. <laughs> I will. Well, say... we, we can work the US broad, uh, UFC broadcast team then because we have no clue. Yeah, I will say one of the best all time quotes uh, when Brian Battle gets back to the interview <laughs> yeah. station and they go, what? What started that interview? And he said, well, I, I moved to the center of the cage and I told him he was a pussy. <laughs> yeah, that's what started the skirmish. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's a fantastic answer, by the way. Hey, yeah. uh, and B, like, I, I'll just say this, like, you know, whether or not he was looking for a way out or not, and you can have your own feelings about that. Uh, <laughs> feel free to feel any way you want. Uh, but Brian Battle <laughs> looked amazing. Yep. Um, Brian Battle looked in a way that I was like, get this guy against some real contenders. We're already um, booking them in the Discord. Yeah, Everyone's booking in, them. If you're in the Discord, shout out to Jong, who said, yeah. I'd love to see him against Neil Magny. Uh, and then Mac, my guy Mac, uh, said, mm -hmm. if he's not ready for Neil Magny, who's, a, you know, he's like ranked 11th in the welterweight division or yep. something like that. Um, if he's not ready for Neil Magny, give him Carlson Harris, which is a sick fight too. So, yeah, yep. either of those two uh, does it for me. Uh, Brian Battle, motivated at 170, seems to be the real deal. Yeah, um, I think Harris is like he's already been fighting kind of that level of fighters. I know Harris is on a good little roll now, but yeah. But what, I, about, I'm, I'm what about what about like a, what if, what about if even if we're not ready for Harris or we we don't think Magny's or you know we do think Magny's too big of a step up. What about like uh, Max Griffin? You know, like somebody of that. That would nature. be fun. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. like I take him against that. I, I just think Carlson Harris is fun because he's explosive. Yeah. Um, and you're right. He has kind of like Ench Lusa is like diet, uh, Carlson Harris, um, <laughs> store brand Carlson Harris. Yes. Yeah. He's, he's Kirkland, uh, Carlson Kirkland, Harris. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I get the reference. We got that too. We got, Carlson. Oh, you guys got Kirkland. We do. We on Kirkland. Sound. That's we fantastic. It. But yeah. anyway, I know yeah, he's See, like, there's so much, we're so, there's, there's so much that, uh, that, uh, links all of us together, but yeah. yeah so he's Kirkland Carlson Harris, but like, yeah, <laughs> at the same really time. Title. Kirkland oh, yeah. Carlson Harris. <laughs> That's that, that one's taking over. Yeah, I, yeah that I one's the leader. <laughs> but, but like a step up for for Brian Battle as good as he looked. I, I'm ready for it. Can you have either Carlson Harris on your show on your other show, Top Turtle, and ask him to change his nickname to Kirkland? Or I, I guess L Losas wouldn't like that if you had him on and said, "Hey, we think you're a Kirkland <laughs> Carlson Harris. Can you change your name to that?" I don't think he'd enjoy that. I'm Probably gonna wouldn't go over well. No, no, we'd I enjoy. Don't. Well, I was gonna say we did enjoy this fight. We did enjoy the the, the six minutes or five fifty nine of it, and then until it stopped. I know everyone says fighters look for ways out, but I don't. Know. He, fighters also um, unrealistically think they're they're going to come back and win a fight, even when they get so, destroyed. So, so you, I'm, you I'm just gonna say that. this thing. I'm gonna say this thing. I'm I'm with you. I'm not the type of person who's like he's looking for a way out all the time. But how the hell are you going to try to fight the guy after the bell? Yeah. If, if, <laughs> you can't if, see. If you, if you can't see. You know what I mean? <laughs> I can't see the fight. Call the fight. They call the fight. And then you're like, let me at him. Uh, like, a, mm, that, that to me is just a little fishy. Yep. Fishy. Fishy. All right. What the hell? Do we have to talk about this fight? This one made me, I got super angry. Well, I was already angry about Dolgarian. Like, very angry about that. And then this, this really added to it. And the, it also added the announcers talk about what a great fight it was while it was going on. I'm it like, was oh, okay. So the last couple of minutes, maybe <laughs> sloppy. It was. Yeah. Um, we're, of course we're talking about light heavyweights. So right there is your warning sign that it's danger there. Oh, OSP of Wednesday and Peru beat, uh, beat. And he legitimately beat, uh, Kennedy and Zachuku. It good, was a, good judge of scorecards. What's this? What decision? Cause it was a close fight, but, one no one judge didn't give OSP the last round, which I think was kind of kind of silly because he almost he had him rocked in the last round and he outstruck him. But anyhow, 28, 28, 28, 29, 29, 28. And Sichuku did not deserve to win this fight. He did not deserve us picking him. He did not deserve being a 549 pick. He does not deserve safe Saud in his corner. He's one of he's one of his guys, right? Yeah, he's like, what side. the hell was that, Gumby? 
It was ugly. Um, yeah, it was ugly. That's I will say, man, you, you couldn't get behind Kennedy and Zuchuku at that number anyway. I think we said that on no. Thursday. Uh, but I'll also, say, yeah, I'll also say this: like, I, I think this is way more damaging to Kennedy than it is to saying OSP has got a second run, right? Like OSP is not. He won. <laughs> it's not good though right like no we can all agree you see him like dipping his he was so so tired he would just put his head down with with like he's trying uh, to block punches with the crown of his head yes yeah. it's right there dude and every time he need him it would hurt visibly hurt him and yeah, he wouldn't I, follow I, it up with anything i'll, I'll also add this i i went on twitter right after that fight was over and somebody was like fly to the night and you know like, it was like <laughs> one of those posts and I, I checked back into our Discord, and everybody was like, what the hell was that? And I was like, oh, <laughs> there you go. oh good. Our people. <laughs> our people understand fighting uh, way more uh, than the Twitter body. Because there was like 32 good seconds of fighting in that fight, and it was yeah. only because it looked like Rock'em Sock'em Robots. Yeah, and it was still sloppy. Yeah, It was bad. Yeah. It was bad. Yeah, Every single yep. minute of that fight was bad. Put your foot on the gas and win the fight. Uh, anyhow, easier said than done, I guess. When he might, maybe he was sleepy too. He wasn't sleepy from grappling. Like our man Isaac Dalgarian. I don't know if he's still our man. He was sleepy from grappling. Guy. Holy moly! Boy, did he come out like a bat out of hell for the first two rounds. He was destroying Christian Rodriguez, like just countering his wrestling, like uh, basically doing what we what we predicted he would do, being a size bully because uh, Rodriguez was. I don't know if he's technically four stop, but he three misses that ban of weight, miss, mate, weight misses. I'm sure if he wasn't told outright, you better be a featherweight. He, uh, he got the memo regardless. So, um, but boy, he, he's, he's a tough guy and he gritted this one out. Um, props to him, but he didn't win this fight. He won one round. He won the last round of the fight. He got 10 aided in the first round of the fight. Um, Somehow still yeah, won. 27, 28, 28, 27, 28, 27. Someone didn't give Dalgarian what they didn't give Dalgarian the second round. And all of them gave Rodriguez a 10 8 in the third, which I think was incorrect because he was dominating, but he wasn't putting a beating on him like uh, Dalgarian did to him in the first round. But regardless, even a 10 8 in the third round shouldn't have won the bite for him because he shouldn't have won the first two rounds. And you got 10 right. 8 in the one. Right. I got no round problem. Round. If, if you want to give him the 10 8 to third, it doesn't matter because he should have already been down three points. Um, I, I will say. I'm increasingly annoyed by MMA media who is like, oh, well, yeah, he did have four and a half minutes of ground control, but how much damage did he do? Yeah, they, they've swung way over to the other end, like like Michael Bisping and all those people have as well. But, <laughs> yes. but, but if he's on top for four and a half minutes, how much damage he's, could the other guy have done? He's you know, not like, getting that's, hit. <laughs> that's the dumbest shit I've ever heard, because like on one hand, you're right. Yeah, like he, he didn't do much damage. But if that was true in two minutes and then he had to stand and trade for three minutes and got beat up, mm -hmm. sure, sure. Give the other guy the round. Yeah, I'm, I'm all about like actually counting damage. But Aaron Bronstetter, who, who's a guy who I usually sort of respect when it comes to yeah. MMA judging, was like, oh, yeah, you got to give C-Rod the second because uh, he didn't you land. He, he didn't, uh, you know, Dolgarian didn't land any punches on the ground in the second. And that's true. He, he didn't land any quote unquote significant strikes in the second, yeah. but he did have four and a half minutes of top control time. And it was eight to 12 on the feet for C rod. And if you think that uh, the effective grappling and striking is the same when a guy grapples you up and looks for submissions nonstop for four and a half minutes and is only four strikes behind you, you think that that needs to go to the guy with 12 strikes. You're an idiot. That's the dumbest yeah. scorecard I've ever heard. Um, Boy, harsh. And, yeah, harsh. and I'm gonna give harsh words to Aaron Bronstetter because he's usually pretty My smart. boy, Aaron. And that's uh, Maybe. he's that's a brutal scorecard. If, if Aaron Bronstetter really uh, uh truly believes that, that's one of the dumber ones I've heard. So uh, uh, yeah, I mean, Dolgarian got that stolen from him. I, he's still one of my guys because yep. here here's the fact of the matter: a he won the fight. B, despite being exhausted in the third, a lot of guys just quit and just let yeah. somebody pound yeah. him out there he didn't he kept moving he kept moving a half guard he kept moving back to top to back to top to back to top until they didn't call the fight and then he got yeah. in on a single yep yeah yeah he, he kept going and you got to give uh tip of the hat to rodriguez too he, yeah, he did yeah. not give up after getting destroyed for 10 minutes yeah he's legit came out like a bat out of hell in the third round so i don't know about him at featherweight still but if he can maybe get his diet fixed and, and get down to bantamweight 
obviously I would like him a lot more, but yeah. Props to him as well. Cause um, yeah, he took care of uh young Raul Howell Hosis as well. So anyhow, pretty good fight all, all in all. It just didn't end well for us. Um, all right, let's move on. Shall we to something more positive? We'll talk about uh, game time, right? They're more positive. I'm going to have to I think I'm going to have to use game time soon. Cause the kid wants to go to Neil young and the tickets are like sold out and they're like a thousand bucks. Come on. So, so now he thinks Neil Young's like not. I thought Neil Young was supposed to be nice. Why is he charged a thousand bucks for tickets? I'm like, yeah, I don't know. Uh, anyhow, he wants to see Weezer. So anyhow, I should use um, Game Time because you can get last minute tickets for the lowest price at Game Time. Check out the app. Check out all the stuff they have because Game Time is the place for last minute ticket deals. Forget planning months in advance. Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the day of the event. Get exclusive flash deals. That's what I need. Flash deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy theater, and more. And yes, there is MMA. I've been on there shopping for MMA before. The Game Time Guarantee means you always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. Snag the tickets without the stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code CFBX for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply again. Create an account and redeem code CFBX for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Is that all we got in that ad? Block two. Oh, we guys, game time gummy. That's all I see. That's all I'm going to tell people about. I'm would not you... looking at that. That that ad would... block. Okay, so you, I, I have no idea. You did you, <laughs> your job's over. That's right. You did the the opening. I did the. Would you spend? Would you spend over a thousand bucks on a concert ticket? No, you would not. No. I guess right. No, I've only for any to, event, right? I've only been to five concerts in my life. Really? Tell the people. <laughs> tell the people who you've seen, Gumby. Go. Uh, I saw Yellow Card in some forty one. Uh, yeah. I saw Third Eye Blind. Yep. I think when I was nine, I, when I was nine, I saw the Backstory Boys. Oh no uh, way! That's who else did I see? Uh, I saw the Wallflowers. Yep. Uh, Bobby Dylan's they, son. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I I saw them. They were right in my backyard. And then nice. uh, I saw. Hmm, I'm missing one. Well, I, yeah. I might have to get back to you on the. Oh, slightly stupid. Uh, which is a reggae band in the. the okay, I, yeah, I think I've heard of them. <laughs> There yeah, you yeah. go. But there yeah, you, go. you wouldn't spend a thousand bucks I, for for the Braves, think, even you wouldn't, right? World I Series even had to spend a thousand bucks. I think I spent four hundred dollars for the World Series. <laughs> okay, yeah. Anyhow, Neil Young, what are you thinking? Um, all right. What are we thinking about talk about this fight card still? Let's let's pick it up, Jeff. Women's band and weights. This one came through for us pretty much the way we expected, the way the first fight went through. Macy oh, Chasson yeah. via via Macy Chasson, you should say it French, via submission. Uh, over Penny Kianzad, rear neck and choke 354 into the first round. Size bully comes through as we expected. I, I think she continues to be like one of the most intriguing bandweights in the world. Um, do you believe that she couldn't beat Raquel Pennington? No, of course like, she could. Like, and, and that's crazy, could. that's crazy to think about because she's been away for a while. But when she's at her absolute best, I think she could beat Raquel Pennington, which means. This is a woman we think can be a UFC champion, which yeah. is kind of crazy. Um, because she's been in ups and downs and looks so good and so bad. And like, um, but she looked great here. Uh, and if this yeah. version of her sticks around and, and keeps working, like the grappling, the strength, the I, I mean the technique, you know, like the the way she she mixed it up in the clinch, like I really think there's a high ceiling for for Macy Chisson. She did lose to Raquel Pennington before though. <laughs> I do know that. I do know that. Yeah. But that was like the featherweight. Bad and she missed her, weight. Though. Yeah. And it was the well, bad yeah. Version. She was miss, yeah. missing weight at featherweight. So she's she's in great shape now, it appears. So down a weight class, too. So yeah, yeah she's got to get uh, some wins stacked up. She's got loss, win, loss, win over her last four. So that's kind of the problem with. But she beat the, the hell out of. She she was beating Arena Aldana, though. Like, yeah, and I think and we talked got, about yeah. this on Thursday. She took her down. She looked like she was landing better. And then she took that weird up kick and wound up getting mm -hmm. TKO'd. And, like, yeah, we're, we're singing a very different story about Macy Chason if that mm -hmm. fight goes 15 minutes and she wins a decision. Yep. Yeah, and I was going to say there's not much wiggle room in a weight class like this. Like, you get to step up immediately. Like, like she yep. got to step up. To, Pennington didn't make it. Got to step up to Aldana. Um was doing good, but didn't make it. So yeah, if hopefully she can get back in the cage soon. It doesn't look like she took really any damage in this fight. And uh, let's get get the ball rolling. Let's get some interesting people at the top of the weight class, shall we? Um, middleweights opener got this one right too. Gerald Mirashart took care of Brian Barbarina. Face crank 
technical submission too. face crank 423 into the second round. We had GM three at minus 240. And more importantly, Gumby hit his prop pick. It was only plus 110 when we called it out. But still, uh, you had Mearshart via submission. Yeah, I can't believe the odds were where they were. Because uh, bottom line is, is Mearshart is one of the best finishers in the middleweight division. And we got Barb Barbarena, who is a glorified, uh, glorified, 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 glorified uh, welterweight. And uh, certainly has had issues with grappling all along the way, including against mm-hmm. Jason Witt. So uh, uh, shots fired on Jason Witt. And, oh, yeah, uh, that's right. <laughs> shot, shot, shots fired on our uh, bankroll on this one. Yes. Shots fired and Jason Witt. Uh, yeah. Um, so that is that was the exciting main card where we got one fight right, Gumby. We really should have had one three and a right. half, two and a half, <laughs> three and a half. Uh, I mean, like, yeah. All right. We, we got to pick things up here in the prelims in speed and in uh, and, and in uh, winnings. But first, champs. Champs is hosting a free March Madness bracket contest for a chance to win a thousand bucks. Plus, if you host your own March Madness pool on champs, you get an extra extra free here's the key free entry into the bracket contest tiebreakers are determined by who enters first let's so make sure to register now so you don't miss out head to sports gambling slash champs c-h-a-m-p-s that's sports gambling slash champs and hall of fame bets win it bigger by betting smarter this nba season with hall of fame bets the sports betting analytics platform for parlays player props and game lines research every nba and soccer bet with historical stats and data Entering Parlay ID and the Hall of Fame Bets Revolutionary Parlay Optimizer Tool to get hit rates broken down by leg, as well as an expected probability for the entire parlay. Start all players with hit rate for any bet to learn which players are hot and which picks have value. Stop betting the dark and join over 30,000 users researching with Hall of Fame Bets. Craft more intelligent, data-driven parlays. Download the Hall of Fame Bets app or visit hofbets.com and use code SGPN to get 50% off your first month today. Start researching, start winning with Hall of, of Fame Bets. Okay? Okay. Um, all right. Oh, and for Underdog Fantasy, did I tell you about Underdog Fantasy already? I did, right? No, I didn't. I missed Underdog Fantasy. I got to tell you about them. Our friends Underdog Fantasy are here, of course. I knew I hadn't said that yet. And they have the easiest way to play a sport, a fantasy sports over on their site. Here's what you do. You pick between two and five players. You build a pick them entry by picking higher or lower on any various stat totals. They have lots and lots of different stats. And if, if you want some guidance, Gabby and I do uh, NBA articles for sportsgamblingpodcast.com every day uh, on this. And I see there's hockey ones on there. There's college basketballs on, on our site, lots of stuff. So uh, we can kind of guide you through it, but it's pretty easy. You pick higher or lower on any stat total that they offer and they offer a lot and you can win up to hundred times your money, which is a lot of money. So here's what you do. Sign up today with, Promo code MMA SGPN and get your first deposit doubled up to 100 bucks as well as an instant pick them special. Visit underdogfantasy.com or find them in the app store. And don't forget to register with the promo code MMA SGPN. Get your first deposit doubled up to 100 bucks as well as an instant pick them special. You must be 18 or older and present in the state where Underdog Fantasy operates. Terms apply. Concerned with your play, call 1 800 522 4700 or visit www.ncpgambling.org. Did I hit them all? Did I miss anyone? Do you I, have I any other? You, I think you got it all, man. Okay. You sure? You don't have any other graphics loaded up there that I missed? Uh, no, now not, I'm self-conscious. I, I got some real old ones up here. Okay, yeah, uh, I can do those too. I could probably um, remind you of some former sponsors that he Grooming uh, and uh, yes. Um, there's, right. there's a couple of sports books in here that I don't think yeah. we talk about anymore. No. <laughs> uh, we do talk about Mike Davis because he looked fantastic. and he He's great. And. Yeah, ended up the prelims with a win over Nathan Levy. Submission, arm triangle choke, 143 into the second round. You questioned me whether Levy really is a grappling specialist or is that just something he has to fall back on because he can't handle it on the feet. And yeah, he, uh, he got he it. He looks like crap. He got it. Fed. <laughs> I'm like, this. I was thinking, is this guy UFC caliber? And then I'm like, oh yeah, he's two and one. So he's really, he's got like two wins in the UFC already. But then if you see who he beat, he beat Gennaro Valdez and Mike Breeden. So yeah, but anyhow. Back to back to the positive. Mike Davis looked really good, like a beast. Boy. Mike Davis has now won four straight in the UFC's lightweight division, which is a sentence that I mean is crazy. And to, to the point I made on Wednesday show, he lost Sadiq Youssef in uh, on on contender series. Like this is a guy who almost didn't make the UFC, and right now it seems like maybe we're not ranking him high enough. Uh, I, I'd love to see him against, dude. He called out Patty Pimblet. He'd beat the shit oh, out of yeah. Patty Pimblet. I <laughs> yeah, think he'd beat the shit out happening. of Patty Pimblet. I, I'm not, not wrong, happening. right? Like you, you would yep. pick him over Patty Pimblet tomorrow. Yeah, yep. 
Yeah, he made his UFC debut on a week, a little more than a week's notice against Gilbert Burns. Oh, wait a minute. That, that's the bad Burns. Um, no, wait, that's the good Burns. Gilbert no, Burns. No, you yeah. like Gilbert Burns, not Herbert. Yeah, so up, I was thinking Herbert. So up a weight class. L- and less has won the, every fight since then. Yeah, a week's notice. And then, yeah, and now he's back at his weight class. The problem with him, just like Macy Chason, he hasn't hadn't fought since 2022. October. Yeah, we got to get him active. But we got to get him active. Get him active. Good fight. Uh, Chelsea Chandler can't strike for the life of her. She's getting pieced up by Josiane Nunes, who's kind of like a Kirkland uh, Jessica Andrade. I was thinking while, <laughs> while I was watching the fight, just not as good. But she, she's a little tank, and she lost 29 28 across the board. She can't Kirkland. grapple. Kirkland Maybe if you, if Jessica Andrade, yeah, is great. <laughs> it is, it's true though. She, she's a little little tank, but she can't. Um, she's not as good, obviously, as Jessica. Andrade. Yeah, because she we, only throws the left hand and not the right. Yeah, one. <laughs> if if we put these two, if we put her and Chandler together, it'd be a much more much better fighter than than they are separately. But Chandler can grapple, and she's tough. But yeah, she she gets hit a lot and doesn't like it. Yeah, I, and, and this is one of those fights where, first of all, I think the judges got this run right. I, I think Chandler won this fight. Yeah, it was close, but yeah. Uh, but I'm, to not, me, I'm not disputing it. But to me, if you watch the the C-Rod fight and the Dolgarian fight and you give it a C-Rod, there's no way you don't give this fight to, <laughs> to Josie Nunez. And, yeah. and the consistency is the piece that pisses me off. Because I think Nunez won, and I think, or I think uh, Chandler won, and I think Dolgarian won. But if you give it to... To see Rod, you gotta to give this one to Nunez. Uh, but with that being said, yeah, Chelsea Chandler, uh, I don't know how good she is. I don't know what her ceiling is. No. Uh, she's gotta get better at defensive striking. That's the bottom line. Yeah. Come on, she, she isn't she the one that trains with the Diaz's? She should be slipping. Oh, and yeah, moving and, the Diaz's yeah. are notorious. <laughs> they never get hit. Strike. Yeah, those, yeah, those guys right. don't get punched in the head. <laughs> that's right. Defending strikes, you said it's true. Yeah. Um, yeah. they're um, good boxers. Yeah, it's true. I should mention, Hedy, I was shocked to see it on the screen, but it was true. Both these women were ranked, ban- are, are ranked Bantamweights uh, at the end of this fight. So, ooh. Um, Jafel Filo, boy. I, I went along with you, Gumby, thinking he wasn't good, but boy, he sure looked good here. And uh, Gumby's going to tell us that Ode Osborne's a wrestler, but boy, he was not a wrestler last night. That's for sure. He got he dominated on the ground. Bit. He, stuffed he got dominated bit. on the ground. Four he's not, ju- he's not a jiu-jitsu Rear- specialist. I said a wrestling. Oh, that's true. <laughs> Rear naked choke for Phil Feel- Ho. Maybe Phil Ho is good because he really sunned this, uh, sunned Ode Osborne. He really, um, yeah, he out physical him, out grappled him, out everything. Yeah. Good performance. His jiu-jitsu is legit. And it was like a weird takedown that got into that position. But I would say that like he knows how to get it to the mat. And I underestimated that. So props to him on that and can't wait yep. to see him again. There you go. Um, that's how we should recap fights. But people were looking forward to this this uh, recap of ours so, or this uh, episode. So for some reason, catch weight fight. Danny Silva missed weight, but uh, he used that weight to his advantage by beating Josh Koulibau. Well, he, he almost had him out of there in the, in the first round. Ended up squeaking by with a split decision. Luckily for us, 29, 28, 28, 29, 29, 28. Yeah. Silva looked good. I hope he can get the weight thing figured out. Yeah. Same thing. Uh, I hope he can get the weight thing figured out, but that's a huge test in his debut fight. Mm-hmm. Josh Kolobau, who's, uh, I, you know, I said it on Wednesday, I've been high on Kolobau for a long time. So to pick against him, uh, I guess a newcomer, uh, mm-hmm. I, I gotta have a lot of faith in Danny Silva and I do. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to him. Maybe we'll have to take more time in this fight. John was waiting for this. He, he, want, he wants Jacqueline, Jacqueline, uh, Jacqueline. Sorry, I was saying Jack, it like Jacqueline. 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 That's right. I, I'm I'm saying it like an English speaker. I forgot. She's Brazilian. It's Jacqueline Amarim. Um, we were confused by these odds heading in, and we were confused by the odds heading out. Um, she was she was even bigger underdog when we got the fight night too. We had her at only like plus one hundred five, one hundred five, and when I. I did it like an article the next day or the day after. She was, she was, yeah, she was in the forties then. Yeah. Then she got even higher, but yeah, she dominated McKenna. Like we thought she would. She's got 10 inches reach on her. Uh, Cause McKenna's a, a little tiny gal and then just destroyed her on the ground. Um, had her, had her almost submitted the referee actually called in, stop called her fight. to stop the fight. <laughs> so she, she let go and loosened up and then he went, no, go, 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 which is great refereeing. The Thank worst God that she I've just, ever seen. Yeah, that was horrible. Thank God that she and she touched and he, he touched uh, Emerin as well to stop the fight. So that's when you let go and you stop the fight, which she did. And yeah, luckily she just transitioned transition to another submission and another submission that ended up arm barring, nastily arm barring uh, Corey McKenna. There's levels to this here grappling and 
Um, she showed it there. Minute 38 into the first round. I guess I'm happy that he did do the go, go, go thing. Cause if he just thought that right <laughs> there and uh, McKenna claimed she didn't tap, they would have done one of the, Oh yeah, that's right. I did mention they that. I mean, they, she they been, tapped a bunch of times. Yeah. That would have been a Daniel Lacerda, uh, no contest, uh, uh, yeah. which would have sucked. And then we would have seen this run back or something like that. So I guess at the end of the day, the judge at least got it or the ref at least got it uh, right. But um I'm going to say this, and John's going to be pretty bummed at me when I say Uh-oh. this. Uh-oh. I like Jacqueline Murrim. I think she's legit. I think her jiu-jitsu is insane. She's There's so a butt good. coming up. There's a butt coming up. But. Nah! I wanted to see her hit a takedown. I wanted <laughs> yeah. to see the fact that she could get the fight to the ground on herself. And basically what happened is it got in the clinch, and she was like, she climbed up on... <laughs> McKenna and McKenna was like, okay, why not? It wasn't very then, high to go, to be fair. Then, Climb yeah, up yeah. on her, but, yeah. but but then McKenna was like, okay, why not? And then it, McKenna immediately found out why not. Yeah. Uh, and so, like, I still kind of have to know if Amorium can get there on her own because I don't know if she can get there on her own. And that yeah. is kind of problematic when you're a jujitsu specialist. Yeah, that is definitely. Yeah. I was going to ask, how is her wrestling? We don't really know, I guess, at this point, do we? At least not at this level. So, not, not really. Um, so, M McKenna, did, I didn't see it. She did do the old Welsh tap a few times. She, she did a Welsh well, tap. So <laughs> I, I mean, uh, on the original one, the one the ref stopped, uh, she, she basically tapped on that. She yelled out, she kind of tapped. Uh, and then when it transitioned to a triangle and then back to an arm bar, she kind of tapped there again. Uh, and then it moved again. And she kind of, I would say, if you go back and you watch, you could probably stop that fight three or four times, and there's yeah. no argument either way. I, th I think it was uh, stopped three or four times, wasn't it? I mean, at <laughs> least two. At least two. So, uh, yeah, no. So Amorim, bad. you should get your dog of the week, by the way. Jeff Fox's dog of the week. Oh, yeah, my dog uh, of the week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we'll prop one, that up. Come prop on. that up. Uh, and, uh, yeah, no, I got... I, by the way, her sub prop, did, did you see what the number was on her sub prop at Fight Time? Uh, no, I don't think I plus, included that. Plus in 300, man. Why? What, uh, what are people? What are people? I don't know. About? And I wrote about it for SGPN MMA. Uh, good. You, you, you go ahead on uh, sportsgamblingpodcast.com and check my picks yeah. on there. It was 380 earlier in Fight Week. Uh, and I was like, how do you not bet Jacqueline and uh by right. submission? What I I guess we weren't missing anything with uh, we kept saying what are we people in the Discord are saying too what are we missing with what are we uh, missing what are we missing with, with Poppins here and apparently nothing because the cause answer was nothing the answer is yeah. we had it right and the sharps had it wrong <laughs> occasionally that happens so that that was nice so yeah so the event started well that that was the first good thing that happened for us because uh, the Canadian Canadian foiled us again in the opener of bantamweights Chad and Helliger um, took care of Charlampos. Gregorio, this was the other man who grappling made him sleepy. Um, yeah, he didn't look that good to begin with. His he grappling good wasn't grappling, though. Yeah, he was. It was a lot of just control and holding, which is you no know, fine, you know. Um, but he lost 30, 27, 29, 28, 29, 28. Uh, the old Canadian comes through. Shout out to John, who said that if this is the same Charlie Lampros Gregorio who fought Cameron Smotherman, Smotherman would be in the UFC right now. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That is true. All right. So on the on the night, I went six and six. I lost almost 200 bucks, 196. Gummy went five and seven. So I'm ahead of him. He lost 318. So on the year, I'm at 57%. You're at 56%. Finally, finally. But you've lost you've lost less money than I have. Um, we're basing Still this ahead. off 100. Still ahead. Yeah. For the people who are new here, we based off 100 bucks on every fight. So we just, you know, blindly bet that on every fight. So that's not the way any of us gamble in real life. So based on that, Gumby's down 5%. I'm down 9%. You, you don't make money that way. We have learned over the years, even though I, I made a good go at it a couple of years ago. I had about eight or nine, nine months. I, Gave, I was the in, world. Gave the world. In the money. And then if uh, the, the wheels fell off. Um, fancy picks. Delgarian was our lock. We, we should have won. He won. He, didn't. he won. Yeah. His fault too, I gotta say. Um, Osborne, that didn't come through. That that was a, that did not look good. But not your fault. Uh, he's a wrestler. Damn it. Uh, Amarin came through, and then uh, GM three via submission. Gumby had that as his prop. I had Toy Vasa via KO. That one did not look good. Even though it almost did. Delgarian knockout. Gregorio knockout for the Hungry Man Jong. That obviously didn't happen as well. Uh, no fight of the night. Shocking. It was such a great great night of fights. I thought OSP was gonna win it with. Uh, <laughs> With the man who I, I maybe I'm not going to mention his name anymore now. Um, 
Florence of the Nights, Marcin Tybura, Macy Chasson, Jafel Filo, Jacqueline Ney, MRM. We Can I just win. say how bullshit mm, it is that GM3 didn't get a performance bonus? Yep. Everyone should get and It should just dude, be finished just, bonuses, basically. Dude just tied Anderson Silva for the most subs or the most finishes at middleweight. Yeah. How the hell does he not get a sub bonus? Uh, I mean, that's wild to me. They should just they should just do finish, finish bonuses, bonuses like I'm like some of the smaller promotions do. They got the money. They're not paying it to the they pay what seventeen percent to the fighters or something. I think they can afford to do this and then and make them look good too. Anyhow, uh, that was last night. If you think that people are talking about quitting after last uh, last night's fight card, oh boy, next week we got a better main event at least on paper. But yeah. I love the odds on this upcoming card though. Okay, well I haven't looked at the odds yet. All right, let's run through it good quickly. Night. It is UFC. On ESPN, so this is on on the big ESPN. That used to mean something. They used to like pack those fight cards, but those days are over. Uh, Hibas versus Nama Nama Yuno. So there, right there, that is that is good. We got a former champ. We got one of our favorites in Amanda Hibas, a fan favorite. So that's that's a quality main event. But then it drastically falls off. <laughs> like it does. It's not even gradual. I'll I'll let you know. We got Hibas Nama Yunus. That is that flyweight. That is in our main event. He, I don't like this Hibas jumping back and forth weight classes, but. Anyhow, she's not consulting me. Um, here's the co-main event. Heavyweights. Justin Toffa coming in on short notice against Carl Williams. Ay, 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 ay. Uh, Edmund Shabazi and AJ Dobson. Peyton Talbot, Cameron Simon, the people's main, main event right there. <laughs> Billy Quarantilo, Yusef, Yusef Salal. That's at least fun, I guess. Salal Fernando, getting back in the UFC rules. Yeah, that should be fun. Uh, Fernando Padilla, Luis Pay. Payulo, Payulo. That's the main card. Prelims. Kurt Hollabaugh, Trey Ogden, Ricardo Hamos, Julian Arosa, Miles Johns, Cody Gibson, Yarno, or Jarno, Aarons, Stephen. Say it. Say it, Gumby. This is one that we fought over. Win. Win. Gumby won. <laughs> Gumby won the win. He won the win fight. Stephen win. Monsterette Hendon. Not the Monsterette that's on Gumby's, um, Gumby's Mount Rushmore, the other one. For Daria. What is his name? I think I've said it before. <laughs> Zelaz Nyakov. Yakova. Zelaz Nyakova. I've said her before, right? Was she on Contender Series? No. Or straight, no? straight what, higher. Have I talked to her about her before? I don't think Maybe so, not. to be honest. Boy, how do you say the name then? <laughs> you you nailed it. I'm just really? going <laughs> yeah, to say you got it. That's, that's what you say to your other co-host, too. <laughs> Yeah, you got I, it. Good I job. know I didn't nail it. I nailed it. <laughs> Igor Severino, Andre Lima, Mohamed Usman, Mick Parkin. We're getting delirious from this episode. I think we were delirious from, Mo from the Usman, get Usman, baby. <laughs> oh boy, boy, boy. This fight card, Gumby. Oh boy. Gumby. Is I'm gonna say I'm gonna here. say Let's this. Go. Positive. I'm gonna say this. If you look at this fight card and you go mm-hmm. through it and you make all your picks without looking at the odds, and I, I know you're to do yet, yep. and I know you tried to do that. I think you will not wind up with less than five underdogs. Oh, that's my, that's that's my prediction. That's my prediction. You okay? Will well, end, that's that's a positive. There you go. You will end with let who who do you think's the favorite in the main event? Oh, uh, come on, yeah, uh, Nama Yunus. Okay, you're right about that. Who do you think's the favorite <laughs> in the co-main event? Tafa or Carl? <laughs> Who knows? Probably Tafa. Oh, no, actually, it should be Tafa, even though it is short notice. It should be Tafa. Tafa's plus 200, man. Oh, no way. Carl yeah. Williams isn't good, is he? <laughs> Am I, I forgetting stuff so. in here? Oh, this is going to be think... fun. All right. I'm telling Please, you, this, this the whole card is like this, man. The whole card is like, lots of money. wait a second, that guy's a favorite and he's negative 200? That guy shouldn't be a favorite against anybody in the UFC. That was how I felt about the whole card. Wow, that's interesting. Well, it's good. Hopefully we're we're smart, as smart as we think we are. All right, there you go. There's a reason for you guys to listen Wednesday and Thursday. It may, it may not be a fun fight card, but it's going to be a profitable fight card with a lot of plus wins. But um, we're talking about Wednesday already. No, uh, we got an episode tomorrow. Monday is our regional day. We're doing LFA. Hey, guess what? We asked the bosses. They obliged. Tuesday, we're doing another special episode. We can't pass on Octagon because Octagon is our little niche thing that – people like like to uh like to watch so uh the, the checks love us come we're going to go on tour um <laughs> so we're doing not going on tuesday so everyone is cheering right now their spouses are asking them what they what's going on and uh they will tell them they're doing octagon on tuesday and the spouse will not know what they're talking about so there you go um in the meantime discord is where we are talking about peyton talbot 
and Cameron <laughs> Simon. It's no no lie. That is where we've been talking about that fight for quite a while already. Um, SportsGamblingPodcast.com slash Discord. Was it, was it good last night for people? I just saw like the end and people were not happy. I assume it was a bad night for everyone. I think the the the, the weird thing is that they hit big fights and yeah. big odds. Yeah. So like I think the the hit rate was low, but the the major hits were big enough that like everybody cracked even. Like you know hitting plus three hundred on uh, on a girl by submission, a Maureen yeah. by submission, and hitting yeah. plus one hundred on on GM three by submission, and hitting this one. You know like it was just like so many big hits. And then of course we're gonna talk about it on Monday. You guys can definitely tune in. Cage Warriors was very nice, uh, and I think oh. some people hit Cage Warriors along with me. Yeah, lucky you didn't retire like you were told to, Gumby, right? Yeah. Shout out to the guy <laughs> who told me to retire, <laughs> to retire. Uh, from regional <laughs> MMA right before I hit a plus 210 uh, underdog in the main event at Cage Warriors. <laughs> that, 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 uh, that's like um, when you check, when, when I check YouTube in the back end and it shows you comments that haven't been responded to yet, that's always the top one that hasn't been responded to. So I'm always reminded that Gumby should retire because we're not going to respond to that gentleman. So anyhow, um. That will be Monday, Tuesday. Uh, Discord, I told you about that. Uh, Gumby's got Top Turtle MMA Podcast. Make sure you listen to that. He's got good guests on it. We'll tell you about that tomorrow. Maybe we'll tell you about that tomorrow. This has been long enough. I got my money, MMA.substack.com. Get in there, subscribe, enter my free UFC weekly pick em contest. YouTube, please make sure you slam, smash that subscribe button. Uh, and thanks for watching us there. Uh, sportsgamblingpodcast.com, sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash Patreon, sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash store. Remember, madness is your code there. And that's all we got. I'll be back tomorrow. Midwest Choppa, Jeff Fox, Bonsai, Gumby Vreeland. We'll talk to you then. Bye.